The story really began about 700 years before Jesus Christ was born. God, through the words of his prophet Isaiah, promised a Messiah who would be the savior of the world. Isaiah, as God's messenger said, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son and call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. And God was faithful. Years later, he sent an angel, Gabriel, to Nazareth, a village in Galilee, to pay a special visit to a young virgin named Mary. Gabriel told Mary, Greetings, favored woman. The Lord is with you. You will have a son, and you are to name him Jesus, and he will reign over Israel forever. His kingdom will never end. I imagine that Mary must have felt very honored to be selected as the mother of the child of God. I would have been honored too. At about the same time, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph, who was engaged to be married to Mary. The angel told him not to be afraid to take Mary as his wife and said, She will have a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. God knew ahead of time that Jesus would be born in Bethlehem. As part of God's divine plan, the Roman Emperor Augustus decreed that a census would be taken throughout the Roman Empire. To register for the census, the people were required to return to the hometowns of their ancestors. Because Joseph was a descendant of King David, he had to go to Bethlehem in Judea. King David told him. Well, kids, as you might imagine, with so many people traveling away from home, all of the inns in Bethlehem were full. When Mary and Joseph arrived, they couldn't find a place to stay for the night. And finally, they found shelter in a stable. Nearby, in the hills surrounding the city of Bethlehem, shepherds were guarding their flocks of sheep, just like they did every night. This night, though, was different. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared. The Bible tells us that the shepherds were terrified. I would have been too. Ah, but the angel told them, don't be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy for everyone. Today, in the town of David, a Savior was born to you. He is Christ the Lord. You will find the baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. The shepherds rushed to Bethlehem so they could see the newborn Savior for themselves. People came from miles away to worship the newborn king. Wise men from far to the east followed a great star which led them to Bethlehem where Jesus was born. When the men saw the Christ child, they were overjoyed. They worshiped him and gave him valuable gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. In some ways, Jesus grew up just like any other child in Nazareth. In those days, children learned trades, like making pottery from their parents. Joseph, who was Jesus' earthly father, was a carpenter, so he taught Jesus the trade of carpentry. Every year, Jesus' family went to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover festival. When Jesus was 12 years old, they attended the festival like they did every year. But when it was time to go home, they didn't realize that Jesus had stayed behind in Jerusalem. They didn't notice he was gone? Well, Colby, they were traveling in a large group of relatives and friends, but eventually they did miss him. When they couldn't find him, they went back to Jerusalem, and sure enough, there he was, sitting amongst the teachers in the temple, listening and asking questions. Mary and Joseph must have been really worried, but Jesus told them that they should have known where he'd be, in his father's house. The Bible tells us that the teachers there were amazed by Jesus' understanding. When the time came for Jesus to begin his ministry, he asked John to baptize him. John didn't think it was proper for him to baptize the Son of God, but Jesus convinced him that it was the right thing to do. You see, Jesus wanted to be obedient to his heavenly Father in all things. The Bible tells us that when he was baptized, the Spirit of God descended and lighted on him like a dove. A voice from heaven said, this is my son whom I love, with him I am well pleased. One day, Jesus entered a village and sat down beside a well. When a woman came to draw water, Jesus asked her for a drink. He told her, if you only knew the gift God has for you and who I am, you would ask me and I would give you living water. The woman was puzzled, but Jesus helped her understand that he was talking about spiritual thirst. He told her that if she were to drink water from the well, she would get thirsty again, but the living water that Jesus was talking about would give her eternal life. Jesus traveled throughout Galilee teaching in the synagogues and telling everyone who would listen about the kingdom of God. He also healed lots of people. 
The Bible tells us that he healed a blind man and several people who had leprosy, a terrifying disease that nobody knew how to cure in those days. When the only child of a widow died, Jesus brought her back to life. News about Jesus' miraculous power spread and people began to come from far away to receive his healing touch. Wow! Yeah, that's right, Molly. They had no hope until they heard about Jesus. But when they came to him, he graciously healed them. On his way to Jerusalem, Jesus passed through the town of Jericho where a man named Zacchaeus lived. Zacchaeus had become wealthy by collecting taxes from others. He was not tall enough to see over the crowd, but he was desperate to see Jesus. So what do you think he did? We've heard the song, Grandpa. He climbed a sycamore tree. Now that's right, Colby. And when Jesus spotted him, he told him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. People in the crowd complained that Jesus associated with sinners, but Jesus knew that Zacchaeus had experienced a change of heart. Zacchaeus promised to give half his possessions to the poor and to pay back the people that he had cheated. By this time, Jesus' time on earth was almost over. During his final week, he rode into Jerusalem on a donkey. Lots of people were there for the Passover festival, and many people in the crowd spread their coats on the road ahead of him. Others cut palm branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Why did they do that? Well, they had seen the miracles that Jesus had performed, and they wanted to show their great respect for him. They shouted, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Glory to God in the highest heaven. One evening, Jesus sat down at a table with his twelve disciples to celebrate the Passover feast. As they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread and he broke it into pieces and he gave it to his disciples and he said, Take, eat, for this is my body. Then he took a cup and gave thanks to God for it. He gave it to them and said, Each of you drink from it, for this is my blood, which seals the covenant between God and his people. Afterwards, Jesus went to an olive garden called Gethsemane to pray. He was very troubled. He fell down on the ground and prayed, My Father, if it is possible, let this cup's suffering be taken away from me. Yet I want your will, not mine. He must have known all along that he was going to be crucified. Well, yes, Colby, he did. He even told his disciples that he was going to be crucified. His purpose in life was to die for our sins. He never committed a sin in his entire life, so he was the perfect sacrifice, perfect enough to pay for the sins of the whole world. Jesus loved us so much that he was willing to die a horrible death so that we wouldn't have to spend eternity paying for our own sins. The good news, Molly and Colby, is that Jesus' crucifixion is not the end of the story. Jesus' enemies thought that he was dead and gone, but they were wrong. On the third day after he was buried, he rose from the dead. Jesus' friends and followers were delighted to learn that Jesus Christ, the same one who was born in Bethlehem in a stable, had gloriously risen from the dead. His resurrection proved that he was the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Jesus appeared to a lot of people during the next few weeks. Then, 40 days after he rose from the dead, he gathered his disciples on the Mount of Olives, and there he ascended to heaven, where he lives today with his Father. He promised them and us, I will be with you forever, even to the end of the age. Molly, Colby, I hope that you understand now why I wanted you to come to Bethlehem City.